The reversal of benefit and harm, the connection between calamity and disaster, should be closely examined. Sometimes, when you want something, that in itself can make you lose it. And sometimes, when you try to avoid something, that in itself can make you face it. Once a man took a ride in a boat and encountered a squall. Fearful of the waves, he threw himself into the water. It was not that he did not want to live and did not fear to die, but that he was so confused by his fear of death that instead he forgot about life. So it is with habitual desires. Once, when a man stole some gold right in the middle of a bustling town, the police asked him why he took the gold right there in the open market in broad daylight. Like so many, he said, "I only saw the gold. I didn't see the people." His heart was so set on what he wanted that he was oblivious to what he was doing. People who enjoy giving are invariably good at taking. People who enjoy rewards invariably have many resentments. Only those who obliterate their tracks in non-contrivance and follow the inherent nature of heaven and earth are able to master order without love of fame. When fame is exalted. The way does not work. When the way is working, people have no ranks. So, when there is praise, censure comes with it. When good appears, evil follows. Profit is the beginning of loss. Fortune is the forerunner of calamity. Only those who do not seek to gain will have no loss, and only those who do not seek blessings will suffer no disasters. Those who do not know the way give up what they already have to seek what they have not yet got. They fret and worry, which leads them into being selfish and devious. Therefore, when fortune comes, they rejoice, and when trouble comes, they are afraid. Their spirits toil at planning and scheming. Their intellects labor over their affairs. Troubles and blessings sprout and grow. The people may live their whole lives without conscience, resenting others for what they themselves have created. If they are not happy, they are anxious and have never tasted peace within. They are not masters of what they have in their hands. This is called the birth of madness. Suppose three people are living in the same house, and two of them get into an argument. Each of the two arguing thinks he or she is right and will not listen to the other. The third person may be ignorant, but can certainly decide who is right from the standpoint of a third party. This is not because of wisdom, but because of not being involved in the argument. The best flavor doesn't jade the palate. The best speech isn't ornate. The best amusement isn't comical. The best music isn't noisy. The master carpenter doesn't do the cutting. The master chef doesn't boil the water. The master warrior doesn't fight. Attain the way, and virtue follows this. If you want to abandon learning to follow nature, this is like leaving the boat and trying to walk over the water. When a fine sword first comes out of the mould, it cannot cut or pierce until it is sharpened. When a fine mirror first comes out of the mould, it cannot reflect clearly until it is ground and polished. Learning is also a way to sharpen and polish people. Those who say learning is useless are mistaken in their argument. A general philosophy for people is that attention is to be fine while will is to be great. Knowledge is to be round while action is to be square. Abilities are to be many, while concerns are to be few. Refinement of attention means to consider problems before they arise, to prepare against calamities before they happen, to guard against faults, and to be wary of the subtle, not daring to indulge desires. Greatness of will means to embrace all nations, to unify different customs. To include all people as if uniting a single family, to see that judgments come together and to be their hub. Roundness of knowledge means to operate beginninglessly and endlessly, reaching all quarters.
the deep wellspring never exhausted, responding to all things as they arise in concert. Squareness and action means to stand up straight without unruliness, to be plain, pure, and unaffected, not to be quick to excitement in straits, and not to indulge in whims when successful. To have many abilities means to be competent in both martial and cultural arts, mannerly in action and repose, to be able to act or refrain as is appropriate, and not to turn away from anything, but to find what is ultimately right in every situation. To have few concerns means to master skills by holding the handle, to deal with the many by attaining the essential, to govern the extensive by grasping the general, to control hyperactivity by being calm, and to work on the pivotal, using the one to unite the myriad, the joining of the pieces of a talisman. Regulate the subtle. Those whose will is great embrace all. Those whose knowledge is round know everything. Those whose action is square refrain from doing certain things. Those whose concerns are few minimize what they hold. Usually, when people think, they always consider themselves right. But when they put it into practice, what they thought was right may turn out to be wrong. This is wherein folly and wisdom differ. When people are calm, this is their celestial nature. To act on being moved is the capacity of this nature. When the spirit responds to things that come up, this is the action of cognition. When cognition and objects come into contact, like and dislike arise. When likes and dislikes are formalized and cognition is lured outside, unable to return to itself, the celestial pattern is obliterated. Therefore, those who arrive at the Tao do not replace the celestial with the human. Externally, they change along with things, but internally, they do not lose their true state.